Hi, my name is Vincent and today I want to show you all how to simplify radical expressions. We got six examples that include square roots, cube roots, and fourth roots, but they're all going to use the same concepts. So one of the first concepts we're going to make use of is that anytime I have the square root of a times b, I could break this down into the square root of a times the square root of b. And we're assuming that the variables are non-negative when we have an even index. So for square roots, uh, a times b has to be positive. Now this also works if these were cube roots. So this concept of breaking a radical apart works whether it's cube roots, fourth roots, or any other type of roots that we might be dealing with. And then the other concept to make use of is that when we have division, then we could break this into two separate radicals as well. Okay, and we're gonna use that for all the problems here. So the first question, we could rewrite this decimal as 8 over 100. And then 8 over 100 will simplify to 2 over 25, which we could accomplish this by dividing the numerator and denominator by 4. So now we'll just move this out of the way. So we have space. And what we're going to do is use that second property. We're going to break this into square root of 2 over the square root of 25. And then to close this out, we have the square root of 2 doesn't simplify, but the square root of 25 is equal to 5. And we want to write these in simplest radical form, and we're going to assume that means to make sure our denominators are rational, which in this case 5 is a rational number, so we could stop here. Now for the next question, we have to make use of like one of the most common traps in math. We say like if x is any real number. This notation means x is an element of the real number system, which just basically means x is any number you could think of, except imaginary numbers. Then the square root of x squared, let me just make that neater, the square root of x squared is equal to absolute value x. A lot of people say x, but if x is any number we could think of, then the square root of x squared is uh, absolute value x. However, they're saying here that x is non-negative, which means x is greater than or equal to 0. So yeah, we have x is non-negative when we have an even index. So in that case, the square root of x squared is just equal to x. So you have to be very careful with this, because it's wrong to say square root of x squared is equal to x, unless we're restricting our numbers to non-negatives. So we'll move this over now as well. But now that we got that out of the way, the way I like to do these questions is I break this into two radicals. This is going to be my radical with the perfect squares. And then this radical will be the, we'll just call it the leftovers. So this is the leftovers. And the numbers that we want, since this is a square root, we want the biggest perfect square factor of 128. So if we list the perfect squares, see we keep going. And it's going to take a little while to get there, but 64 is the biggest perfect square factor of 128. So we're going to write a 64 here. And then for x, x squared is a perfect square. The square root of x squared is equal to x in this case because we're dealing with non-negatives. And you see how when we say the phrase even index, in case you're not following this, this is an even index because we're dealing with the square root and 2 is an even number. And now the leftovers, 128 is equal to 64 times 2. And since we took all of the x's, you see how it was x to the second, and we have that entirely written here, there's nothing left to write in that second radical. There's no leftovers of x. So now we just do the square root. The square root of 64 is 8, and the square root of x squared in this case is equal to x. And then this is all being multiplied by the square root of 2. So our solution here is 8x times radical 2. For the third example, we're going to make use of that division property. So we have the square root of 3 over the square root of b to the fifth. Now we could repeat that idea that we could break this into two radicals. And the biggest perfect square factor of b to the fifth is b to the fourth. And then the leftovers here would be b to the first. Now, the trick is, anytime I'm trying to find the perfect square factor, is if my index is 2, I'm thinking of 
I need the biggest number that gets close to 5 that's divisible by 2. And since 4 is divisible by 2, the square root of b to the 4th is equal to b to the 2nd. So that's how I know like to go with b to the 4th, because it's divisible by 2, and if I were to pick anything closer, it wouldn't be divisible by 2, because 5 is not divisible by 2. So then here, we go ahead and simplify. We got radical 3 over b squared times the square root of b. Now, simplest radical form in most schools is going to mean we should rationalize the bottom. So we're going to multiply the top and bottom of the fraction by radical b, and that'll get this radical to go away. So then we've got radical 3b over, we have b squared, and then square root b times square root b is equal to b. So our final answer to the third question is radical 3b over b to the third power. Let's just fix that up. Whoops, took out all of it. So radical 3b over b to the third. All right, now for the next question here, same concept. But we're going to break the numerator and denominator into multiple pieces. So we have two radicals for the numerator, and we have two radicals for the denominator. Now what I'll do, since we finished this question, is I'll go ahead and shrink this stuff so it's out of the way. Now for 4, 4 is a perfect square, so we'll write all of it. And the biggest perfect square factor of a to the third is a to the second, which would mean all we have left in the leftover radical would be a to the first. And if we multiply 4a squared times a, it brings us right back. For 27, the biggest perfect square factor is 9, and the leftover factor would be 3. And then same idea, b squared is the biggest perfect square factor of b to the third with the leftover of b. So now the first two are the ones that actually simplify. So the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of a squared is a. And we're still assuming that we're dealing with non-negatives here, since we have an even index, since we're doing square roots. And then we have the square root of 4a squared was 2a times radical a, and the square root of 9 is 3. The square root of b squared is b times square root of 3b. But once again, simplest radical form, we're going to assume that we want to rationalize the denominator. So this radical 3b is a problem, so we multiply by radical 3b on bottom and on the top. And then this will start to simplify. So we have... In this fraction, we have 2a times radical a. And you know what? We'll just go ahead and combine it in this step. So we've got 2a, and then radical a times radical 3b could combine into a single radical. We'll say radical 3ab, since we're just multiplying a times 3 times b. And then for the bottom, we've got 3b, and then radical 3b times radical 3b is just 3b, because they're matching terms here. Okay, um, I could go through the trouble of saying 9b squared and then saying the square root of 9b squared is 3b, but anytime you multiply a matching square root by another, well, anytime you multiply a square root by its matching square root, the square root just goes away. So then now to simplify everything, we've got 2a radical 3ab over 3 times 3 is 9, and then b times b simplifies to b to the second power. So this is our, exam our, this is our solution to the fourth question. So now for the last two, we're going to be dealing with cube roots and fourth roots. So the idea is similar, that we're going to break this apart into two radicals. One of them, this time, though, is going to be the perfect cube, since we're doing cube roots, and one of them is going to be the leftovers. So now for the number, 375, if we look at numbers that are perfect cubes, 1 to the 3rd, 2 to the 3rd, 3 to the 3rd, 4, and then 5 to the 3rd power is 125. This is the one that we're going to go with. So we have 125 times 3 is 375, so that goes here. And now for x to the 5th power, you want to think the perfect cubes would be x to the 3rd, x to the 6th, x to the 9, x to the 12, because these are all divisible by 3. The cube root of x to the 3rd is x. This one, the cube root is x squared. This one, x to the 3rd. 
So the closest we could get to x to the fifth would be x to the third. So x to the third is going to go here. We'll do this in a different color. So we've got x to the third here. And then there's going to be an x to the second left over, since x to the third times x squared brings us to x to the fifth. Now for the y term, y to the sixth is a perfect cube because y to the second times y to the second times y to the second equals y to the six. So since y to the six is a perfect cube, we could write all of it in that first radical. So now we'll get this out of the way and simplify. So here, when we break this down, the cube root of 125 is five, the cube root of x to the third is x, and the cube root of y to the six is y to the second. And then we're just multiplying by the leftovers, cube root of three x squared. So this is our simplest radical form here. Now for the last example, similar idea, except this time, what we're gonna do is we're gonna break it into two radicals. We have the perfect fourths, and then we have the leftovers. So this time the perfect fourths are one, two to the fourth power is 16, three to the fourth power is 81, but 16 is the one we're going with. It turns out we have 16 times 2 is equal to 32, so the perfect fourth, 16, goes in the first radical, and this one goes here. Now for x, the perfect fourths are x to the fourth, x to the eighth, x to the twelve. You really just need exponents that are divisible by 4. But the closest we could get to x to the fifth is x to the fourth. So x to the fourth goes here, and then the leftover would be x to the first since x to the fourth times x to the first is x to the fifth. And now for the y to the fourth, y to the fourth is a perfect fourth, and there's nothing left to write in that second radical. So then to close this out, all we have to do is take the fourth root of 16, which is two, the fourth root of x to the fourth is x, and the fourth root of y to the fourth is y. And then we have fourth root of two x. Okay, if the number was much bigger, like just let's say it was something like the fourth root of, I don't know, x to the 100th power, just know you could always fall back on that power over root definition that the c root of a to the b power could be written in fraction form like this. So I could always just say this is x to the 100 over 4, which would be x to the 25th power. All right, so. For smaller numbers, it's, you could kind of do these in your head, but if it was something big, just know that you just do uh, power divided by the root, and that's a quick way to simplify. Okay, this is going to conclude this video on simplifying radicals. If you found this video helpful, please click like and subscribe below, and if you have any requests, please leave them in the comment section below, and thank you all for watching.